Hey, y'all, you physicists and poor deluded people who have been lied to by their teachers. Welcome to my next uh, physics tutorial. And the reason why I started off kind of weirdly today and how about how your teachers you know, are lying to you is because if you're in high school, um, they're probably teaching you the Bohr-Rutherford diagram. And that is an incorrect representation of the structure of the atom. And so, you know... The Bohr Rutherford diagram is, you know, where you have an elect um, a nucleus in the middle and you have electrons orbiting around the nucleus. And this doesn't actually happen. Or, um, electrons do not orbit around nucle nuclei. They actually um, pop in and out of space at any given moment. And that is basically, that, that is just one of the inherent properties of electrons of nature. They, they do not actually just travel like the planets do around the sun. Electrons just popping it out in in um out of uh, in and out of existence in a little region that is uh in a little region around the nucleus like this like this little region right here this is where the electron can pop in and out of and this region is is commonly referred to as the um as a cloud where the electron can be found and so. Let's go right to the Bohr model and why it's wrong before I get into this to, to the wave mechanical model. So the reason why the Bohr model had to be replaced was for two um, big reasons. Was the first one was that the more the Bohr model only explains the observed spectra for hydrogen, so it only fits hydrogen atoms or one atom, or, I mean, or atoms with one electron. So only fits hydrogen for the observed spectra of light that was given off and two that it cannot explain why the fixed orbits were there it it explained why I mean it showed that they were fixed orbits but it couldn't really explain why the fixed orbits were there in the first place so could not explain fixed orbits so these are two um, um, Huge um, properties of the Bohr model that could not that that um, was that was wrong with it. So we you know we need um, a new and revised edition of this of the model of the atom of the structure of the atom to understand exactly how chemical reactions occur and all that kind of stuff. So this lesson actually uh, relates back to my previous lesson about the um, about De Broglie wavelengths and. What De Broglie said, just a little recap, is that since you know, since light, light which was thought to be a wave, behaves as a particle, why can't particle behave as waves? And electrons actually do this. Electrons, which are particles, behave as waves, and hence the term, the wave mechanical, the wave mechanical model of the of the atom. Wave highlight wave emphasis on the wave. So the guy who actually put all these together was called Erwin Schrödinger, and he created a wave mechanical equation and the reason why he did this was he he agreed with uh, De Broglie and said that De Broglie was right and that electrons actually orbit around the nucleus in in um, in a waveform and they and ah uh, I keep using the word orbit electrons do not actually orbit they they don't actually move like like cars or whatever they don't actually travel they just pop in and out of, of existence so it's kind of a unfortunate word unfortunate choicing of where it's orbit because when we say orbit we kind of think of planets orbiting around the sun but electrons don't actually orbit so that's a common mistake right there uh huh so let's go on to uh, give you <laughs> this pretty daunting equation and i actually like it because <laughs> it kind of scares off some people um so this is what it is so i won't go into the much detail into this equation because i myself uh <laughs> I can't really even um, use this equation, so why explain something that I, that I can't really use, right? Besides, I'm, I'm, I'm only in grade 12, so I have plenty of time to learn this equation and how to use it. And I should probably explain what these parts mean, what this little... <laughs> one, one, one of my friends asked me what this was, he, he thought it was like Poseidon's trident or something. You know, like Poseidon's trident. Anyway, I'm getting off track here. So, what this is, is the, letter, the Greek letter Psi. And it represents the wave function. And I might explain this more in a future video. Oh, what happened to my cursor there? The wave function. Um, 
Yep. So that represents a wave function. X represents the electron's position in one dimension. So one D. H. We all know H. H is you know H is Planck's constant. Energy is the total energy. And V is a potential energy. And okay, so you know don't try to use this equation. The, the only reason why I'm bringing it up is because this shows this um, helps me to explain to you guys um, how the how the wave mechanical model is um, consists of electrons behaving as waves. And what this equation tells us, it describes the the the, the energy and the position of an electron around the hydrogen atom in one dimension x. And this is basically a simplified equation of it. I mean, they're much more complex stuff that you find online, but this is the, the one of the simple ones that I find. And the equation can be solved for psi, um, the little trident thing, which describes where the electron can be found in terms of x, y, and z, where an electron is likely to be found in, um, you know, anywhere in space, around the atom. And these regions uh, where the electrons are likely to be found are known as orbitals by kind of type. I mean, right, are known as orbitals. Orbitals. Okay, and once again, there you go, orbits, kind of unfortunate word choice there. Okay, so, the reason, and okay, so let's talk about why the, you can't really pinpoint where the, I mean, why you, why the wave mecha mechanical equation is, is used to describe um, where the electron can be, can probably be found, and why, is it, why it's probably not, and not actually be found. The reason why I use probably is because of something called the Heisenberg Uncertainty Principle. And it's, um, it's quite interesting, actually. What it says is that, um, let me just write this down first. I can't, I can't really multitask. Uncertainty principle. Okay, what Heisenberg's uncertainty principle, uh, what am I saying? According to Heisenberg's uncertainty, uncertainty principle, um, if you know an, a particle's momentum really, really well, you can't know its position that well. So that's always this like, give and take situation. So this is represented by this change in x equals to change in p. I mean delta. I mean is greater than or equal to reduce h con uh, reduce Planck's constant over two. And I might talk about this in a future video. But what this basically says is that the more you know about an object or a particle's position, which is x, the less you can ever know about its the less no, I mean the less accurate you can know its momentum. And that is why you can never know. Uh, exactly where an electron is around an atom, because then you lose all all information, all information about its momentum. So that's why we, we we describe the electron as in an, as being in a cloud of probability. So if I drew an atom right here, I mean a nucleus, this would be the cloud where the electron can reside in. You know, popping in and out of space, but you can never actually find it. It's just you know, we, you just know that it's somewhere in there. Okay. So how about if we actually draw it out for you guys, um, and let's explain. Let's actually ex um, explain why this wave mechanical model co um, co combats this problem. Why it, and how it explains fixed orbits. So the reason why it, it explains fixed orbits is that since electrons now are described as waves, the reason why um, electrons can only occur as fixed orbits is, is because of some, something called standing waves, and I'm sure you've, you've heard of it. You know, in, uh, guitar strings. That's how gu gu guitar strings works. Um, you know, at n equals one, this is a hard, um, fundamental frequency, and basically what happens is electrons um, act as standing waves. So if I drew at n equals one, n equals one, see the, the same term right here, n equals one, n equals one. You, I this would be the, f the the fundamental standing wave for the electron. And it will look something like this. And at n equals 2, it will be something more, you know, with more wavelengths. Oh, wow. <laughs> wow, that's a pretty complex shape I just drew. This is n equals 2. And the reason why the electron cannot occur anywhere in this region is because if I try to draw a, if, uh, if I try to draw a setting wave inside here, let me try to draw a setting wave inside here. You know, this isn't drawn a scale. It would end up like that, something open. It wouldn't actually close. The standing wave would not be complete, and that is why, since the standing wave cannot be complete, the electron cannot be found in anywhere in that region. 
or anywhere in here or anywhere in here can only be found in the yellow lines that I drew. And that is why the, the orbits are fixed. And that is why your teachers are lying to you guys. <laughs> so, hope you guys like this little video of why your teachers are lying to you about chemistry. And I'll see you next time. Peace out.